TFYLP is sponsored by CapturedPrey.com. Great toys, great prices, great service. Visit www.CapturedPrey.com for all your import, transformers, and third-party figure needs. And save even more through the Captured Prey loyalty program. CapturedPrey.com. Mega Toy Fan. Look for Mega Toy Fan at popular toy conventions like BotCon and TFCon, as well as on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Mega.ToyFan. Far away world, a battle is raging between evil and good. From the stars, they came here to earth, caught in their struggle through the whole universe. Robotic warriors. Who's up your here? Welcome to Transformers for your listening pleasure. T F Y L P for short. Join us and discuss the latest in Transformers fandom. And now, without further ado, here is Weird Wolf. Now, where did I put that chorus stop? Ratchet, can you take the chorus stop? Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to another edition of Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure. I am your host, Weird Wolf. We are recording on April 3rd, 2015. This is episode number 148. And along with me this evening is Headmaster Don. Hey, everybody. Jim Black. Hello, everyone. Cyburn2, a.k.a. Michael Swift. What's up, everybody? And also joining us uh, from BotCon is Pete Sinclair. Welcome, Pete. Hello, thank you. Uh, Brett couldn't be with us this evening. He had some things going on, so uh, um, you know he said uh, maybe he might be able to jump in uh, later on if he gets home or something. But who knows? So we'll we'll see. Um, but we're going to be covering some things tonight. Uh, some things that we've 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 actually covered before on the show, but we're getting ready to ramp up with convention season uh, hence why we got Pete on the show and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, convention do's and don'ts uh, some uh, uh, just general convention talk and also some uh, th some things that are in the news and you know there was a big reveal this past week with uh, with botcon and uh, 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 the reveal of the first botcon 2015 exclusive figure in pack rat uh, we'll be talking a little bit about that and uh, um, some some things in the news. Uh, anybody have any uh, news items that they want to talk about right off the bat that has really jumped out at them? Blue Blue Streak is absolutely beautiful, and I will own it the day it comes out. Yes. Yeah, I have to admit, uh, whenever I saw the pre-orders go up at uh, Capture Prey, uh, our sponsor, um, there is a limited, limited stock of those coming out. So if you really want one, pre-order one as soon as possible, uh, because I don't think they're going to be around very long. Uh, and it's a toy that everybody wanted, you know, back in the '80s. You know, they teased us on in the instruction booklet with with that blue blue streak, and and we we never got it. So here here we go. How how limited is that said to be? Is that like ten thousand? I've heard I, two thousand. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I I'm I'm not exactly sure the the total uh, amount of uh, of uh, production run on it, but I do know that it's uh, so, uh, certain retailers, maybe all retailers, are getting a limited stock of them. Um, but it's an absolutely beautiful um, beautiful deco on it. Uh, and for those of you who haven't actually seen pictures, if you're if you're listening. Um, it's essentially the masterpiece Dotson mold, uh, the blue streak or, uh, or, or the streak mold, and where uh, streak was like a dark gray with a black hood and black roof, um, and then silver streak was like all silver with some black accents. Uh, 
the blue blue streak uh, will appear as it did in the generation one uh, instruction booklet where the sides of the car will be blue the top of the card will be uh, car will be uh, um, uh, silver and then like the head crest will be yellow instead of red so and uh, Doran, I've seen a few things uh, mentioned that they've sort of adjusted the figure a little bit now I'm doing this from memory so if I'm off I apologize but um, it's supposed to be the prow head and a different torso from one of the other figures. Hmm. Uh, that, and that, that's what I, that's just what I remember from reading uh, the article. Uh, so it looks like they, they did some adjustments to make the figure stand out a little bit more than just a straight recolor. And it does come apparently with both missiles. Yeah, actually, like, uh, actually, the, the Silver Streak. Uh, Silver Streak actually came with the missiles as well. So, um, you know, I, I don't know the 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 specifics of it again I you know I, I pre-ordered it and that's about all I know and I know it's going to be a limited run but uh, you know I absolutely love that Dotson mold my, myself personally and then uh, the you know, my favorite version of it has got to be the uh, the smoke screen that's mine yeah because I mean th there's it's so different from the others with the with the bumpers and and the different head and the launchers. It's just it's just gorgeous and the color scheme is just well. I mean, it's it, I've got it as my wallpaper on one of my <laughs> one of my computers. Those colors just pop anyway. I mean, you know, probably you've got black and white streak. You've got gray and smoke screen. Boom. You know, you you got mm -hmm. red, and blue, and little yellow. And yeah, well, that's I think I think that's one of the reasons why Blue Streak is gonna uh, gonna kind of help jump in there with Smoke Screen because he's adding a little color where there generally is none on those molds. So, um, and it's also giving us a uh, a figure that's not necessarily red or or, or silver. <laughs> I mean, in, in a in a line where uh, the colors are pretty much you know they don't shift too much you know there's not a whole lot of blues and blacks and everything so in my opinion but anyway we're uh, let's let's move along um some uh, wave 2 figures in combiner wars are starting to hit uh some of us have picked some up uh, i know uh, sideburn and i were talking briefly about this little guy here um for those of you who are listening on our on our audio only version i'm holding up a a uh, copy of uh, Blackjack, the Legends figure in Combiner Wars. Um, that everyone is freaking out about. Mm, indeed. I mean, he's just got so much articulation and, and, and everything, but he does have an issue. You want to go into that a little bit there, uh, he, Cyber? Yeah, he doesn't actually peg on to Minasaur's chest in a way that even lets you slightly look at Minasaur without him falling off. Um, because really I bought it because I wanted him as the chess piece for Minasaur. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I can't, you know, I can't lean Minasaur just, just barely forward without him falling off. And I'll actually demonstrate it here real quick. Yeah, for... But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a great overall figure. Um, and I have, I really have no problems with it, but it's like, I would, I, I know they're coming out with, you know, with this as Rodimus, and now it's sort of like, well, I don't really need a tiny Rodimus, and if he's not going to connect well on Optimus's chest, I don't see the point. Yeah. Um, and I know some people are like, you know, suggesting some of the normal fixes, like, you know, you know who I'd like to see him, instead of Rodimus. I'd like to see him repaint, uh, redecoed into. I'd like to see him repainted into uh, a Road Handler, the MicroMaster Road Handler, or something <laughs> along those lines. I can see that. Because the head is kind of, I think, kind of similar, mm -hmm. except for I think Road Handler actually had a face and not a face mask, but I mean it worked. I think so. But uh, so the quick and dirty. My Minasaur. Oh shoot! Bang. Um, you know he's in there, and I'm leaning him back a bit because all I gotta do, 
It's going to make a fool of me now. Uh. <laughs> He's holding in there just tightly now. Yeah. But the other day when I put was putting it on here, I oh, well, I didn't fully transform his chest. Let's see if that changes anything. Because uh, the section wasn't out. But, so he, I mean, he's uh, not as incredibly loose as he was being yesterday, the other day, but he's still not, doesn't peg in very well. And, uh... That peg, right there. That's yeah, the it's, uh... Yeah. Well, and then, and his pegs are, like, they're not really pegs, they're these, uh... Stubs? Well, they're more like, uh, because they're not round, they're more like, uh... Kind of like a, like a traveling uh, screwdriver or something. Yeah. Um, think of Phillips' head that hasn't been sharpened, or pointed, you know. Um, and so they don't really, they just don't have a lot of contact, and they don't, so they don't get much friction, and they just, it doesn't take any effort. I All I'm doing is tipping them and waiting for gravity to do its thing. I noticed that the handle on drag strip here, the, this angled handle, has a similar design uh, to those pegs. I don't know if there might be some kind of running thing with that or, or what that is necessarily. Uh, yeah, the running theme said it's annoying because yeah, it doesn't really fit right with anything. <laughs> but. If there were a way to maybe have some kind of clip or something that would slide in the little slots here uh, on each leg and just hold the two halves together snugly, yeah, it would solve the peg problem. I think. I, I think I'm just going to have to resort to the nail polish or future floor polish uh, treatment yeah. to the to that little peg to those pegs on the chest. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, the duct tape. Yeah, and I hate having to do that to a toy to make it do what it's supposed to do to begin with. But if you can't such is. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's uh, let's. Not dwell on those things too long. Um, let's get to uh, our meat, the meat of our topic tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, convention etiquette and uh, uh, some of the things from uh, BotCon, like the toys. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of some of the toys, um, like the, uh, the, uh, the recently revealed Pack Rat is an homage to an earlier uh, BotCon exclusive. And or I guess a revisit to an earlier BotCon exclusive. Uh, so we'll look into that a little bit uh, here shortly. Um, if you're listening to us on any of uh, your listening devices, be it YouTube, be it iPod, your cell phone, what have you, uh, let us know that you're listening and um, mention us on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you post uh, using hashtag TFYLP. We'd love to know that you're listening to us and help spread the word of Transformers for your listening pleasure. Um, now, BotCon has, um, as far as I know, uh, always had convention exclusives. Uh, Don, you've been to pretty much every BotCon. Uh, um, everyone, everyone but 97, which was the year that the, the original Pack Rat came out, uh, oddly enough. Yeah, um, hold, hold on. So I'm only sad that the recent re that there hasn't been a Generations Pterosaur, so that we could get a Generations or a BotCon Fractal. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm hoping uh, in the in the in the comic a few years ago uh, when uh, RC came out from the Black Arachnia mold, uh, we saw Fractal in a Transmetal Two Pterosaur body. So mm -hmm. hopefully that mold is still viable. If it's not being looked at for something coming up, maybe later on down the road, if it's still a viable mode, we might get a fractal from that uh, because that's the way he was in the comic. And we have had convention exclusives in years that filled in gaps from previous years uh, when the mode was available, like Razor Claw mm -hmm. came out a few years after he appeared in the comics from the Leo Breaker mode. Yeah. I, yeah, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe some kind of retooled head on the Age of Extinction swoop figure to take it down to having only one beast head and maybe using that. That'd look That'd a little weird, weird because oh, where, where it, uh, it, the heads are offset, you know, so 
Yeah. yeah um, it it well, looked I, like a, tur- a chicken with one. <laughs> well, actually, one of our uh, one of our viewers on uh, RFC brought up this week using animated swoop for mm. fractal. That could work. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if they had to have the, the the head and just had it split in half and then come down onto the onto the shoulders there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, so, talk, talking talking about well now we're echoing. Why? Who's who's echoing? I'm not. <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway, your second screen experience. No, no, I'm. I've got it looping. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Botcon figure that was released or revealed earlier this week in Pack Rat, uh, the Generation Rat Trap uh, mold in uh, Botcon. Uh, what Botcon was that? Was it um, 97. 97. 97. Yeah, uh, it homages it. Uh, I'll I'll let Pete uh, talk a little bit about it, and if you got it handy, can you show it a little bit more to us? Yeah, sure. I mean, how am I echoing? Uh, it might be. Is that better? Um, I think so. Okay. We do apologize, listeners, for the echo. No worries. So what do uh, you want to know about Pack Rat? Or is it what we did of them? Or? I'm, I, I, I couldn't make out what you said. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, hold on here. We might have to play the technical difficulties music. <laughs> yeah. Would it help if I put? I mean, if I put earphones in, is that gonna help at all or not? That might. It might. Give it a try. I'm not sure if it's coming out of yours because I was hearing your echo as well. I'm yeah. not sure who it's coming from. Well, if say something right now, we might not. You know, the, when you spoke there a moment ago, we didn't have an echo. Testing, testing. No, no. Okay. There's no echo there. Okay, so as far as pack rat, yeah, I mean. To, to talk about the theme of the set and is why how we got to Pack Rat. Um, you know, one of one of the things we looked at the last few years is the Stunicons. Um, Stunicons set we did in 2011. People really dug the whole idea of um, a unified theme. So we kind of we we kind of tried that with 2012. But we wanted to do the whole verses, and it it, it kind of worked, but we had some issues with a couple of the figures, I know. Um, and then 2013, we of course did the um, the uh, yeah, right. Teen Wars, which yeah. went over still incredibly well. Um, so, you know, after that set, we kind of thought, well, let, let's start, instead of doing just instead of doing theory-based sets, and we don't want to be just necessarily pigeonholed into doing team sets. We thought of kind of maybe more of, um, well, team, but broader teams. So, for instance, for last year we did the Pirates. And we had some, you know, some leeway there. So you had Zarak, who was the son of Zarak, Olin Zarak, um, who was, a, uh, who was a, a, a Nebulon, who was a pirate. And, of course, you know, that's, you know, made Scorponok a pirate. Um... And then you and then you had like Farak and you had uh, Cannonball, of course, as the leader. So it, it allowed us to kind of bring some other characters in. And then with this year's set, we wanted to go a step further, and kind of looked at it for two from two points of view. Cybertron is most wanted, not just we we like the idea of a theme of the most wanted, like as far as the bad guys or the Ocean's Eleven type thing. You know, kind of like the bad guys having to come together. Kind of save the world, save Cybertron, but that also what we also kind of look at it as far as most wanted, as far as what people kind of been asking for. So it all just kind of made sense. It all kind of came. It all worked out. So of course, Packrat was kind of that automatic. As soon as they saw anybody who follows Botcon, anybody that knows Botcon, as soon as you saw the new Rat Trap, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, that would make a beautiful Packrat." So and then the fact that he's a thief in the fiction, it just he obviously fit perfectly into the theme. 
and then uh, and then we've got the muscle and the boss and the loose cannon and the bounty hunter still. And all four of those, I think, when people see them, we put this way, when people see them clearly as opposed to sitting on my desk to the left, they see them clearly, uh, and, and they see which ones get the new heads. Um, I can't see them. But they'll understand. <laughs> yeah. What is it? I was trying to look uh, over. Like I can't see them. Uh, yeah. I don't think it works that way. Um, so uh, so yeah, I think people will really once it all, once they see everything together, they're going to see that that is an awesome team. Um, I think they look great as a team. They in the story so far, it's worked out perfectly. Um, yes, there are a couple Noth Guardians in the galaxy, though. But for for the record, we actually thought of this concept before we even. I mean. I, of course, you knew the movie before I even heard about the movie. We had already started working on that set, and then when the, the movie came out, when I heard about the movie, I was like, oh, there are some parallels there. So, of course, we played off it a little bit. So, fix- so, so let me get this straight. We're going to get Heinlad as Rocket. No, yeah. That would be amazing. There's only so many things you can do with a story like this. I mean, there's, there's going to be some parallels, yeah, and, and, and a couple subtle nods. But, no, I mean, the whole the concept was there... Uh, you know, I think I think the concept probably actually started with Pack Rat. If I had to, I honestly don't remember how it all came about, but I think there probably was a little bit of it in in with that. I just knew that we didn't want to be stuck. You know, okay, are we going to do a RID theme? Okay, so then you know we have to do these five characters, and if we branch out of that, we're going to get hit on that because we are doing something that's not traditional to RID. So. We just what we're we like the broader scopes, but you still get the team. And like I said, by the time it's said and done, it's going to be a team that hopefully people kind of that makes their mark on the on the uh, on the, on the on the fiction, and people are like, oh, that's a, you know, I like that team. So that's that. That's that's Pack Rat. As far as and you guys were talking about Fractal, we we we've looked at that because you guys could just ask me. Uh, we've looked <laughs> at that, we, right here. Uh, we, I actually didn't see you there when I was talking because the uh, the picture had frozen and it still showed you away. Oh, okay, okay, oh. got you. Um, so Fractal, yeah, Fractal is he, he's like been on our list. He's been in proposals and has gotten. You know, I've I've said before if if I one day you know if I ever can show all the things that have been on different proposals that we've either rejected or Hasbro said no, that's not, not a good time right now, or we've realized it's not a good time right now. I, I know he's been on a couple, um, so I mean maybe it just it just depends on where you, if if the timing's right, if we can fit him in. It's like I always bring up Thrustinator. He was floating around for five years before we finally got doing him. So I'm not worried about the mold not being viable. I think it probably is right now. Um, so you know maybe in the next couple of years, sometime hopefully. Um, but but that's all I gotta say about that. So. <laughs> Keep your britches on, in other words. <laughs> well, I have to say that all this year had to do was say Pack Rat, and I didn't care after that. I wanted it because <laughs> I love Beast Wars, and you know, I don't have an original Pack Rat. I, I really want to get one, but it was like, I mean, like you said, as soon as we saw Rat Trap come out, it was like, well, of course it's got to be Pack Rat. I mean, yeah, it a little. You knew he looked great in that blue and the and the and the, the white. So. Oh yeah, he looks fantastic. Yeah. And it, I I, mean, I mentioned this in the pre-show, but at least in pictures, the blue looks to be a spot-on color to the original toys. So yeah, that, that was that was nice. intentional, but you know. Do you uh, do you actually have him handy, uh, Pete? So. Yeah, yeah, I've got some. I'll, I'll I'll grab him here in a few. Okay. Um. Uh, Sideburn, were you actually uh, planning to attend BotCon this year? Um, I've been I've been debating. Oh. <laughs> been debating, huh? Uh, Packrat has made it really hard for me to to say no. Uh, I gotta figure things out. That's all I'm saying right now. Because <laughs> I want Packrat. Do it. You know you want to. You know you want. To. Yeah, we're all just a bunch of enablers here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I would love to go to an actual botcon that's not just one day when everyone and their you know mom is there. 
because that's oh, what happened. You're, you're right only ex- your only experience at BotCon was the 2010 in Orlando. Yeah, that there. one Saturday. <laughs> yeah, you need to you need the full experience. So, yeah. I'll be excited just to uh, get a chance to get Frank Walker's autograph. Mm. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Speaking of that, Pete, that was an incredible, incredible do for y'all because you know we've been trying. Well, not we, but John and Carl tried, Glenn tried, everyone. Is, we, but he's always been so busy, mm-hmm. and y'all finally got him. So c- congratulations on finally getting Mr. Welker. Yeah, tell tell us a little more about uh, on getting Frank and and the details about him. Well, I don't I don't really go. I mean, my friend. I mean, people I talk to on a regular basis kind of know the the whole history with me and everything. And anything three H is all that water is so far under the bridge. Everything's fine there. I you know I sent Glenn the uh, the the toys last year. Or I sent him through Carl the the toys for uh, that we did that were uh, homages to um, Shockerack and. Um, Alpha Trizer and uh, who's the other one? Um, Ape Link. So, but you know, there there was some issues back in '97 when I initially, um, you know, it was originally it was going to be Carl, John, myself, and Glenn, and there were just some issues there, and it didn't work out, um, which was fine. It was no big deal. I just I kind of bowed out and just wasn't interested in in, in continuing with them at the time. But I had actually, um, and I don't remember how I did it. Because this was 97, and I wasn't on. I know some of you were already online, but I was not online. Not that they even had this information. I don't think they even had this online back then, obviously. But I, I had brought the idea to them. I said, we should we should have a, a voice actor at the show. Why don't we get the guy that did the voice of Optimus Prime? Because there had never been a voice, and they thought, okay, well, let's do that. So I had actually contacted um, Peter Collins' agent at the time and, and got his information, and he was interested for not a lot of money back then. Mm-hmm. So... That was kind of the, the thought. It'd be great, and I thought not. And I don't know who brought up. And then someone brought up. We should get Megatron. Boy, so I contacted his agent, and and talked to her, and he wasn't interested. So at least not right then. So we had Peter interested for sure, but Frank wasn't. And okay, that's fine. No big deal. Um, and then you know, and then I guess there was some talk that he would be at the show, and then he wasn't able. You know, for whatever reason, he wasn't able to make it. And then since that show, whether it was. Glenn, Carl, and John doing the show, and then whether it was, since we've been doing this in 2005, we've been trying to get him. We've Every two or three years, we put the word out, hey, you know, it would be great to maybe get you know Frank, and now his schedule doesn't allow for it. He's not interested this time. It just try back. And then this year, we just saw that we, we knew that Peter had been talking about him wanting to maybe do some shows, kind of maybe finally getting into that. That those venues, and so we reached out to them, and it's been an absolute pleasure dealing with uh, the agent that's um, um, representing him. Um, we're excited to have him come out. I just talked to his agent uh, yesterday, so just kind of ironing out some of the final details, and it's going to be huge. It's going to be extremely organized. It's going to be extremely structured because mm-hmm. uh, this is very different the way we're doing it this year. So. Um, we're going to make sure every single person that purchases the VIP package gets that equal amount of time. Um, and I've already got <laughs> the way I'm planning this out because I'll be pretty much kind of the for two days. That's going to be my job. Um, but it will be it will hopefully go extremely smoothly, and everybody will get everything they want out of what we're offering. Um, you know, you'll get as opposed to, you know, you're going to get a picture if you sign up for the VIP package. You'll get a picture. You'll get a, I'm sorry, you'll get a sick, well, you get an autograph, and then you'll get a picture. The picture will be a pro picture. It'll be a step and repeat like they do at a lot of shows, so it'll have a nice backdrop. Um, that will be separate from your autograph. So there'll be no pictures during autographs. Um, but if you want it, but you'll get a picture op with him at another time as part of the package. And then we'll do a, a, a print that um, I've got a, a well known artist um, working on that. And then you'll get a uh, a little lapel pin, like you do like the first day pin. So it'll be an exclusive pin. So that's that. It's going to be huge. It's going to be you know we're thrilled. I'm thrilled. I I know whenever I I, I saw the, or heard the news, um, it was actually I believe we were on our way up to uh, the Indiana uh, meetup uh, last weekend, and me and Orson of Captured Prey. 
and uh, uh, Will Kenny, we were we were all in the, in the Captured Prey van, and I was reading, I read it on Facebook, and I'm like, wow, Frank Welker's coming to BotCon. That's that's kind of a big deal. So yeah, yeah. congratulations on getting him. I, I'm I'm ecstatic. Yeah, it's it's going to be. I think people are going to be. I mean, it's it's you know, <laughs> I think everybody understands, but it's it's a VIP package. So it's you know, we've always tried um, through the years to actually since the way since since Fun Pub took over in 2005. You know, people, you know, you get your you pay your four hundred dollars for your Primus package, but that includes all your autographs and all of your pictures with the guest. Um, you know, and I was responding on a thread the other day, and someone had said something about, I don't know, just something that's kind of a little, you know, disparaging. But I, I, I quickly pointed out that if you came to BotCon last year and wanted a picture and a signature with every guest, you could have gotten, I think, 17 pictures and 34 signatures, and that would have been included in your $400 package. If you would have done that at any other show, or most any other show, I should say, you know, they're charging $20 an autograph, $10 a picture, and that's the minimum. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's about $50, $60 for oh, a picture. I know uh, we okay. have those. Oh, you're higher tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking. $100. Well, I mean, we had Lexington Comic Con down here in Lexington, Kentucky uh, a few weeks ago, and some of the Star Trek guests were unbelievably high. I mean, uh, they had uh, Marina Sirtis, uh, Deanna Troy, they had her there, and I heard just a picture with her was like a hundred dollars, and it's like, you know, there's people that would do that, and 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 uh, 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 brain drawing a blank right now. Check off. Uh, he was there as well, and he, yeah, Walter uh, Walter Koenig. Uh, he uh, he was there, and it was like a hundred dollars for like a picture, and then fifty dollars for a signature on anything. And so, if you wanted a picture and a signature, is 150 bucks. And I'm like, I love Star Trek. I love. I have every, virtually every Star Trek episode there is on DVD. Uh, so, you know, my Star Trek fandom is not in question here. But I would not pay that much for those guys. I mean, that, it's that, that's a bit a bit high. You know, no, and, I and, I, and I'm not trying. I'm not going to fault any show for doing that because I understand. You know, because they're not—they're just meeting them. They're just paying the minimum, whatever. You know that they. they well, it's they, it's set by the guest pretty much. Yeah, and, and that's fine. So it, it, it's all supply and demand. I mean, you know, so I understand all that. I'm just saying, for us, we what we want to do, you know, 99% of the time is, is to have that as part of the experience, and that's why even though we are going to have to charge a considerable amount for Frank um, because that, that's just part of how it, it works. That's, you know, I hope people understand that that we're trying to, this is a the first time he's been at a Transformer show, first time I think he's been to a convention ever, um, and we are going to try to have some extra stuff in there. We're going to have the print. Um, we're going to have the pen. Um, the picture, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to be just taking a picture with your camera. You know, you're going to get a pro picture printed out that you'll actually have there at the show. So this is not going to be just a, here's a signature, you do a selfie with them and, and, and you know, give us your $100 type thing. Um, this is going to be a little bit more, um, we want to make sure that just like anything with the Primus package, um, that, uh, that you know, you get your full value out of what the VIP package and what the golden ticket package will be. So, Pete, uh, Pete just one question. Um uh, for those people, I'll be honest. I would love to meet. I love to meet Mr. Walker. I've uh, wanted to for a long time, but I haven't decided if I'm getting the package yet or not myself. I'm still the, the budgeting and everything out. Um, if there's any prints left over from his uh, his packaging from his from his uh, well, whatever, if there's, if there's any prints left over, will they be available at the show or on the club store afterwards? We will make. The exact. We will. We will release the exact number because I do all the. You know, I get everything okay. printed up. We will do the exact number for the, the VIP package, and then I'll keep fifty for myself. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. no, no. I, I, I just figured if, if, I, if, if I can't. Yeah. But no, I but maybe because. Go ahead. Oh no no! Just because that's going to be you know. Um, okay. It's just part of. It. I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. Now we'll do like we'll do our autograph cards and stuff like that. So there'll be cards, but the actual print that comes as part of the VIP package, no, there won't be. There won't okay. be an Because you know, I, I know a lot of the artists that work on your stuff through the years, 
and they're all they all do such stellar stuff. So it'd be nice to have something from that, even if it's just a postcard. That'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, it's, it's it's still all being, but there'll be other Megatron stuff. I'm sure. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, that we'll be doing. I'm sure we'll do some other Megatron art. Um, but the actual print. I mean, there'll be another Megatron related print type thing we're doing, but the right. one just the IPs. Um, I gotcha. But anyways, what I was saying about the guests is, is the point is is that we do have you know there will be guests there, and I'll go ahead and announce one of them because we were we. We've got all the Joe stuff going on, and we weren't, you know, wasn't able to. Um, the person who does the site wasn't able to get it up today, but we are going to have uh, Sue Blue at the show this year. Ooh, yes. Wow! Yeah, so she will be making her third appearance, uh, her second one in a row. Um, she was out, you know, on the West Coast, but this would be a great way. But this would be a great way for everybody in the Midwest to see her because uh, she has not also done many shows, just because she's been very busy. Um, we've tried for her a couple times and it just didn't work out. But uh, she she had a blast last year. Was very complimentary uh, of everything we did. Just had I said I'd love to do this again. And so as we were kind of planning out who we wanted for this year, we thought, well, let's let's bring her in again. So and and and, and inevitably Donald Ferguson will be in line with a sealed RC to have her autograph it. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I will be in line with a sealed RC. To give her one, if I can find another one. <laughs> Good I luck with yet, that. I have yet to see them at retail anywhere in two states. So I've never. But yeah, but in the past, I gave uh, I gave Michael McConaughey a Trax and a Cosmos. Uh, so I, I mentioned to the Sue Blue, I think when she was at uh, BotCon last year or the last time I saw her, that without we we'd heard the RC was coming out. And I told her. The next time you come, I'll finally be able to give you a G1 RC figure. Now I got to hunt one down. I, she <laughs> may already have one too. So, well, she didn't have. She had, she didn't even have an animated RC, and she told me that. And I know, of course, Predo from uh, Tempting Toys. I was like, are there? I was like, there's no animated RCs anywhere in the showroom. Well, he had a Japanese one. He actually had two of them. I was like, you want to give one to her, and she probably signed the other one for you. He's like, well, yeah, absolutely. So he uh, she gave her an animated RC, and then she signed the other one for him. So uh, that was kind of. Cool. I had a had a question real quick. Uh, not not to backtrack too much, but um, on the uh, on on the photos uh, as far as uh, Frank Walker, mm -hmm. um, is there going to be a a digital option, or is it just only going to be the the photograph? Um, I, I got to talk to. I, I'm working with the. I'm working with the photographer we're going to use in St. Charles, um, so you know I, I need to. I, I'm pretty sure he'll put all those up online that you can buy, probably buy prints from him. Um, I don't know. I mean, sometimes they usually I think they put like one for free, but then they'll offer you like all the different. So I'll have to see exactly what's in the contract with him. Um, I didn't know if maybe it was the sort of thing where you know if nothing else, if if you didn't want to, uh, you know, I mean if you wanted to print out, but maybe the the photo could also be. Like uh, sent to your email account, you know, however many weeks after the con. What, what, yeah, let me let no. me check. I mean, I, I I can see, you know, I'm sure there's different rates for whether or not he, he you know, if he did, because I know you know how photographers work. It's very it's very strange how that all works. I mean, right. they different prices. Sometimes they want to make money off the prints too. Sometimes they just put them up like they did the Kiss Cruise. I think you could you pull it off the website, but I don't think you got a printed mm -hmm. one. You had to print them yourself. Um, yeah. Since he is printing them, I don't know. So I'll check with him. I'll check with him and find okay. out. We're, we'll have all those details worked out. We're still, we're still kind of working on the uh, the, the final things. We know everything we're going to do, but as far as the final pricing, the final exactly what you're going to get, um, that's what we're still kind of sorting out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I do want to remind listeners that if you're listening to us either live or uh, on the pre-recorded audio version, uh, you can interact with us on our Facebook group, the TFYLP Facebook group, or you can also tweet us at TFYLP. Now, if you're uh, you're watching us live on our YouTube channel, if you tweet us live at you uh, TFYLP, or if you uh, comment on our uh, thread on the Facebook group, uh, if you ask a question that you might want uh, Pete to answer, uh, feel free to tweet it at us. Uh, I'm I'm watching the Twitter feed, and Sideburn is watching Facebook, and we'll uh, we'll ask it to Pete if it's relevant and, and if we have time. So uh, feel free to interact with us on there. Uh, now, Pete, um, a lot of people may not be 
um, really familiar with how the the VIP and the golden ticket stuff works. Uh, a lot of people may not have actually attended a BotCon before. Do you want to kind of explain those and and tell how they work and what the differences are? Well, the, um, the we've had the golden ticket for the last few years. Um, the VIP will be will be a new ticket this year. You can purchase the golden ticket, the VIP. You have to you have to have the Primus package. <laughs> you can add the golden ticket and you can add the VIP ticket if you'd like. Um, now, as far as what you get, well, I just highlight I just spotlight I just highlighted what you got with the VIP ticket. You'll get the picture, the autograph, the picture, the print, and the uh, the pin, and then you'll also get priority seating at the panel. Um, golden ticket, you will get um, you will get the picture. The autograph will, and I haven't really told this anywhere yet because we haven't really put out the details yet, but it's no big deal um, for me to tell you now because it's already in the contract. So this is the way it's going to be. Um, you'll get the picture, and then you'll get a pre-signed item. It won't be you won't you won't get an autograph time with him, you'll get a pre-signed item um, as part of the golden ticket, and then you'll um, and then you'll get all the other perks of the golden ticket. The meet and greet on Friday night. Um, Frank will not be at the meet and greet on Friday night. We will only have the other guests there, um, but we will have all of uh, the regular guests and all the uh, you know. Um, um, you'll get the, the signature, and then like I said, you'll also get the picture with him. Um, but you'll see meet Sue and our other guests at the meet and greet. You will have um, priority seating at the panel for Frank, and actually a priority seating at all panels. And then you get three times the limit on all the souvenirs. And the souvenirs I will talk about too. We we did drop those numbers this year. Um, we kept raising the numbers because they kept selling out, so we kept raising the numbers. And the last two years, I think we kind of went a little above the the, the numbers where we should have been. So we have. Uh, not drastically cut the numbers, but we've cut them enough to where um, the one souvenir set, once the golden ticket people buy it and the Primus package people buy it, they probably will probably be sold out. Um, we, and it, actually, that's a really really cool set too. So we did that intentionally, obviously. Um, and then the other two sets, uh, the, the the Troop Builder set, I think is the it's pretty much the normal numbers because um, people are going to flip when they see that. And then the uh, the second souvenir set. Uh, is a little higher than the first one number wise, but it's still um, it's still lower than last year. So we, we cut the, the the box set numbers. So we're, we're pretty much everything's in line with Primus packaging because um, we things have been really steady. We've had great attendance in the last few years, but the souvenir numbers with so much stuff out there, we just kind of cut the numbers down to see see how that works. Yeah. Well, that's that's you know I'm glad you brought that up because. Um, you know the, this fandom as it is. You know we uh, we covered on TFYLP a few weeks ago. Uh, Brett and the crew did um, how the fandom tends to be very polarized one way or the other on certain issues. And uh, and one of the things that I see floating around from time to time is the convention exclusives. And and a lot of and it, it, I, I kind of in my opinion it's it's kind of picking at nits, but at the same time. Um, I, I also see there are the argument is that if there's so many left over of the convention sets uh, that that need to be uh, put up on the club store or what have you, um, it kind of begs the question uh, the exclusivity. You know, a lot of people they want these sets and they want them to be exclusive and valuable. And if there's so many of them still floating around out there, and you know, quite frankly, there are some sets that didn't do as well as others. Uh, but then not every set can be like the uh, the the uh, um, what was that one set the um, the Axelon crew yeah the, uh, yeah that was that was extremely popular and the value of that of that continues to rise mm -hmm. and it's extremely you know sought after um, you know if you lower the numbers and that's always been the argument or the been been one of the main arguments is like if the lo uh, numbers were lowered. Then the value and the and the and then the desire for the toys may go up. And uh, is that? And we're completely aware of that. I think um, I think they got to be careful. I mean, you're you're saying sets now. This 
the, the 2013 set was the only set that didn't sell out. The 2014 set sold out um, before the show. Um, we had some extras at the show, and that sold out. Uh, the 2013 was just, you know, didn't sell out. <laughs> but the souvenirs, I think, is the bigger concern because we were having the souvenirs. You know, we want those selling out at the show. We don't want to have any extras of those. So that is, you know, we the, the whole point that they are, we call them at-show exclusives because they should only be available at the show. But if we have, you know, 300 left over, then we've got 300 left over and we've got to, you know, do something with them. So, um, so that's, I, you know, well, I think, honestly, with the strength of the convention set this year, we probably want to be comfortable cutting numbers um, because of what we are offering and what we are planning. But for the souvenirs, while they store great souvenirs, like I said, we want to make sure that they do sell out at the show. So you'll be seeing less of those, and that should help with the uh, with people's, you know, va- you know, because we know people, you know, want to have some, that exclusivity to them. So yeah. you know, yeah, and that's been that's always been the big issue is the exclusivity of them, and. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people they they shell out premium money for some of these figures. You know, I mean, you know, like deluxes are are like three times the price because they're exclusive. And if there's so many of them left over, you know, it kind of begs the question: Well, why am I paying so much if if they're supposed to be exclusive and there's so many left over? I mean, and, you know, go no, ahead. I was just gonna say, on the club side, we did that with the last subscription service too. You're not going to see. Uh, especially, it just depends on how many people don't keep the subscription through the entire time. But even the first two, we've got no extras of uh, the first two they're going to ship, so there won't be any extras of the first two club toys on the shelf. Outside. So you didn't get them through us or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we're getting an echo again. Don't know. Oh, that disappeared. The Phantom Echo. Uh, hey, uh, I've got one question. Uh, you, you mentioned a while ago the Troop Builder sets. Now, last year's set, the it wasn't a Troop Builder in the terms of the traditional thought. It wasn't Auto Troopers. It wasn't Sharktacons. It wasn't Junkions. It was one each of three figures, and it was three very good figures, but the price was a little higher compared to the regular Auto Troopers. Did... Mixing the figures up on a per bag set not get you the economies of scale that the regular, like the three of the same would. Well, there were a lot. There were some weird factors that it did not work. It, the way that between some shipping issues and the way that the toys broke out, it did not work out the way we wanted. So we went back to the more of the traditional. Um, and I think that was already the plan, anyway. I think that was just kind of a one-off year to do the three nights. So I think you'll see. Well, I like getting the three figures as the as a group set. Uh, I, I just was wondering, since they were about what thirty or forty higher, give or take, over the regular set of three of the same. I didn't know whether this was going to be an ongoing thing or what. No, no, no. We'll see. You'll see a. Uh, you'll see it kind of going back to the normal. The normal program for uh, for this year. So, okay. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And there is not an LG10 anywhere available online. I've been checking here and there to get one for to get one for. What is oh, it? The uh, the, the legends. The, yeah, the, the the Japanese version because it's a little more show accurate. And it's got the nicer box. Actually, so was, actually, from what I <laughs> nicer box. Uh, actually, from what I understand, the um, the Japanese version was a lot more limited run than what we were yeah. originally because uh, some retailers were limited as to how many they actually got. Right. Yeah, I remember that. I didn't. I didn't know. I was just checking around while uh, listening in. And I was trying to find one for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the uh, now let's let's talk a little bit about some convention etiquette. We've talked about this before on the show, but um, you know, with having Pete here and 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 I'm sure you guys deal with a lot of issues uh, at the convention. And without you know, we're not going to be talking about specific people or anything like that. But th- uh, things that tend to recur that are problems at the convention. Um, since we're going into convention season. Uh, let's talk a little bit about things that fans tend to misconstrue and do or things that they shouldn't do at conventions 
uh, and this isn't just for BotCon, but uh, specifically, but it, it, it applies to BotCon. Uh, what are some things that the club runs into uh, at BotCon uh, as far as issues from the fans? I mean, you know, uh, misunderstandings, uh, things that they do that that really interferes with things. Uh, can we talk a little bit about that? Well, you know, I'll, I'll talk about one thing, but it, it's funny if you if you if you were someone who had never been at a show, like any show convention, and you only went by what you read online, you would think that for any show, that there's just people steaming around, fuming mad, that there's people mouthing off, that there's confrontations, that there's issues being raised, that it's unpleasant, um, that, that, that there's like a decent number of those people. In reality, what, what I have found over the last 20 plus years of being to BotCon, is that doesn't happen at all. It is the most laid-back atmosphere for the most part. I mean, yes, people hate the standing in lines because apparently BotCon's the only show you ever stand in line at. Um, so, yes, there are lines. You're going to stand in line. As I've told people, they always say, why the lines on Thursday night? I always remind them, come on Friday morning and wait in line for 20 minutes, and you'll get the exact same stuff, but people want their stuff right then, and that's great, but you're going to have to wait in line. But... So other than really the line waiting, there is so few issues we run into. I mean, yeah, you're going to run into, like, maybe a thing here, someone upset about something here. It's going to happen. That's going to happen at any retail store. It's going to happen at any restaurant. So it's it's very it's very few and far between. And we haven't, and mm. I think, got things oiled to the point over the last few years where they go so smoothly um, that, that, you know, like the things like the Universal event last year, even though you know we didn't actually know exactly sure how it was all going to work out because there was so many different moving parts about the time the buses had to be there and so on and forth, but it just it, it all works out and you know you guys all don't see what we do behind the scenes to kind of keep everything moving forward. Um, you know I think one the one question I've been getting a lot and this doesn't really pertain to us and what we run into, but I think what some other fans are concerned about are the way the questions and the way they're asked at the panels. And um, the Frank Walker panel will be moderated by me. Um, I will screen all the questions. and Not that I'm going to censor the questions or stuff like that, but yeah. I'm going to make sure that we ask the best, most relevant questions and that we make the absolute best use of his time. Um, Thank you. We don't need to ask Frank how you get into voice acting. Um, so... Mm -hmm. We will, we will ask him things about his career and, and make sure, and I'll make sure that the people that are asking the question are acknowledged and that there's still that interaction some way, but it's going to have to be moderated. And honestly, you probably need to kind of do that for the other panels too, for Sue and probably well, best will be on her panel. Um, just kind of make sure we make the best use of their time and we're not asking questions that, honestly, if you want to know, you need to Google, how do I become a voice actor? Because I guarantee you're going to find much more useful information Online than you'll ever find um, asking at, at a at a panel at a convention, um, and not that they're not usually, they're usually happy to answer you, but and they all have different. That's the problem too is they all have different answers. I've heard this question asked many times. They all have different answers. They all probably got into it different ways. So your best bet is to go online and research it if you want to find out how to be a voice actor. Um, no. but yeah, those questions and some of the other questions. Um, you know, not that it's a goofy, I don't mean to say it's a goofy question, but you just have to kind of, let's make sure we're asking questions that the entire... Not ask, not ask questions that's been asked 15 million times. Oh, no, that, let's ask questions that the entire audience is going to enjoy hearing the answer to. You know, not that it can't be personal and directed towards you, but let's make sure everybody's enjoying every single minute of those 15 minutes we have, because we only get 15 minutes with them, and let's make sure we, you know make that a very memorable experience. Fifteen minutes is not a long time either, so, yeah. Um, so, so nobody asked, you know, in Season 2, Episode 7, in this yeah. one scene, what were you thinking about? You know? Mm. Were, yeah. you eating, were you eating a sandwich while you were talking? You know? <laughs> the, questions I always, I, the questions I'm always most interested in is how, uh, uh, is, is, you know, one of the questions that really needs to be asked, and maybe I'll put that one in for myself, um, or maybe one you can ask, is, is it's always great to hear about their perception and how they reacted to the other people in those booths. 
Um, because you hear it from everybody. You hear about you know how it was work to work with the late Chris Lana, and, and you know you hear from other you know I heard stories from uh, Dan Gilvezan about what it was like to work with Scatman Crothers and mm-hmm. talk about him just sitting there playing the guitar. You know I, I've heard all these stories in the years. Of course, some I you know some of them I've heard from them personally. So I got to try not to mix them up. But you know they those those are the great stories that you know you, you want to you want to know what it was like being part of that show and being not just that show, but I mean, obviously back then, is they'll all tell you it was a stupid little kids' cartoon show that they're reading lines for. Let's let's be honest. That's what I mean. Not that they thought it was stupid, but I mean it was that this was like this was one of many jobs they would do in a day. They would go from this studio to this studio, and, and, and you know they weren't thinking that you know they didn't know that it was going to be that. We didn't know it was going to be this. So to kind of put more emphasis on it than what it was, it's more interesting to hear about those how they performed and what they thought of their performances. And I should have said stupid because, I mean, I know they all took a lot of pride. And I know Wally Burr um, took, I mean, he was a perfectionist. So he, regardless of whether or not it was a kid's cartoon or not, he, uh, he, he poured his soul into it. He, yeah. yeah, he wanted, he, he wanted has, it. Has Wally Burr ever attended a BotCon before? Yeah, he was an yeah. artist. Before and uh, actually, I just was on the phone with him last night. Yeah, huh. he, uh, he was 2004. He's not coming to the show this year. We were talking about some other stuff, but he was at 2004, five. Um, and then he was there as our special guest for 2013, 2013 was the golden ticket. He was there with uh, Tommy Kennedy and. Uh, seemed like I re- seemed like I remembered seeing him, but I wasn't for sure. Oh, uh, before I forget. <laughs> He was there in 2013. Glenn Morshauer and David Soboloff and uh, um, I'm I'm blanking on his name. That did um, that did uh, that did Wheeljack. Um, James Ram. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then Tommy Kennedy from the uh, the, the old uh, season five, season four, season five. He was a cool guy too. D- uh, Don, uh, wh- while I'm, I've yeah. got it pulled up here, uh, at Monzo12782, one of our listeners, he says uh, they're doing a second run of RC in Japan in August. Oh, so, yeah, I, so. I saw that. Yes. Uh, I'm, 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 Monzo? Is that Mon- that's Monzo, isn't it? That's yes. Matt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I might have to give her mine and just pick one up later on. Yeah, good. But, oh, yeah, they are, they are doing Monzo. that. The second one, well, I appreciate too. it. Appreciate now... It. Um, you know, going back to the problems, though, let's kind of uh, wrangle it back in here. Um, and, I, and I'll use my experience uh, at um, um, and what, what was the, uh, the there's I think it was 2011 that was in Pasadena. Uh, I was I was at I mean, that Pasadena, one. Like five straight years. Apparently, according to the internet, we were there five straight years. Um, <laughs> no, no, yeah, we were the, yeah we were there at 11. Yeah, yeah, okay, because because uh, I went uh, uh, t- uh, 2010 was Orlando, yeah. So it was, it was, it was yeah. yeah. It was the last year I was with my wife, my wife. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um, the the experience that I had, and this was something that could have been avoided. And I, and now I went to excuse me, I went in 2012 to the one in uh, in Dallas. Yeah. And I don't recall so much of this as a problem then. But uh, and and I haven't had a chance to go since then. But the problem that was that happened in 2011 was that you know how each line is divided up by certain letters of the alphabet uh, according to your last name. And I was in the L line. And uh, in Saint Galvatron, uh, you know, member of the show that's uh, that that helped start this show. He uh, his name begins with an uh, last name begins with an M. And he his line wasn't supposed to open until like an hour after ours was, and or something. And well, anyway, needless to say, I was in line an hour before he was. He came in, went through his entire line, got his set, went ate dinner, and came back. And I still was not even halfway through the line. We were uh, the, the L line. We were in line for four and a half hours. Yeah, we don't do that anymore, though. Yeah. We don't do that. We don't do that system anymore. And well, the reason the reason why is because uh, the lady that was doing our, our our packets and everything, she is sweet as she can be, sweet as she can be. 
but she was carrying on a conversation with every single person that came up there, asking them how they got there, when they got there, that's, all that stuff. That's, that's why we don't do that system anymore, so that kind yeah. of solved that. So, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's just people, you, you come up and we take the next person, it's whoever's the next one available. We just we got it all set up now to where you, you just come up and, the, and, and it's just... Yeah. The way it's organized in the back here is not as much... You, you still have to you have to travel a little bit more than you used to, but yeah, it's it's not that's not like that anymore. So, well, I mean, it it was it was nice that she was giving personable service, yeah. but it was a little bit. It, I mean, considering the length of the line, she is like she didn't give a damn. She was just like, carrying on a conversation with everybody, and you know, and and then uh, and Carl Hartman, bless his heart, you know, he finished his line and then came up and said, you know, you're doing a great job. Let me help. And within 15 minutes, the line was gone. <laughs> but you know, uh, and that's why like I said, that's why we we uh, we we changed that whole format. So not just because of her, but I'm just saying that. Just no, no. I mean, I, and I'm not saying to try to get anybody in trouble because that's that's like four years ago. But uh, that was that was an issue, and I know some people were really turned off by that experience. And it's nice that you all have noticed that and and adjusted accordingly. Uh, now. I'm sure there's other things, you know, we've talked about on this show, like basic, very basic things that, that people tend to forget whenever you go to cons. Mm -hmm. yeah, for example, bathing, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll let you guys talk about that. I don't... Uh... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've talked about it before. I, I don't feel a need to talk about it again, but it's, it's surprising how many people, like, oh, they're so excited to be at the con, they forget to hop in the shower. You know, I take, a I take a shower every day. Yeah, I, I yeah, actually yeah. I mention I will usually take one twice because how much I'm running around. I take one in the morning and then before the dinner event or the golden ticket, I actually will take another one if I have time. I will try to real quick just because it's uh, uh, we all go nonstop from uh, you know 7 a.m. till sometime you know 1 a.m. So so especially on Thursday and Friday. So now. Um, let me let me let me grab something real cl uh, close here, and I've got a question about it. And please, if I don't fall, <laughs> now it might have been answered before, but the Hall of Fame is yeah. it is it dead? Honestly, no, they had it. We had they they, they no no it, it, they um they had something with Stan last year. I know at the uh, at Universal. Um, it, you know, that's a Hasbro thing, so I don't really want to go into that at all. Um, but I, I will, I will say it's not dead. Um, well, I mean, simply, I mean, like I know these are just simple, simple cardboard things, and uh, I, would love, I would love to see the cards come back because I mean, it's, yeah. it's, you know. It, it was it was really nice, and I mean, I still have mine. Um, you know, from 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 the cons that I've been to. You know, and. You know, it, it's it's something small. Uh, granted, you know this this first one here with uh, the uh, the black one with uh, with uh, these guys on it. You know, the card stock was really nice and thick, and then it got kind of cheaper through the years. But but I mean, the second one, that, the Michael Bay one was the second one. Where's the what? Which one's the first one? You should have uh, Peter Cullen. First one. It's, well, th this one here is the the thick card stock. Mm -hmm. But that was uh, that was the second one, though. I'm saying is what I was trying to say. Okay, um, and then okay, here's the inaugural one here, and it was on basic cardstock. They started thin, went up to thicker, and then went back thin. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it, it'd be nice to have a little more consistency in it because the, you know, the thick card back is nice, especially yeah. for its you know it's 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 a little it's. To me, the re and the reason I have these, some people don't give a damn, but I, me personally, obviously, I have mine, and 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 it's something neat that that you can attend, and I can look at it, and and I had a really great time at these events, and it's it, it, to me, it was part of the highlight of Botcon is is these events, and um, you know, having that as a as a physical reminder that I've I've got just laying around my uh, my collection room here. Is is really uh, something special? And, and, I get I, that. and last year, I think where they wanted to put their money, I think you know they, they have a budget just like everybody, and I think they wanted to put while they still were celebrating the Hall of Fame, they wanted to put that money more into what they were doing with the Universal and, and kind of creating that experience, and you know you getting your Stan Bush ticket and stuff like that. So you know you're not going to always see. Unfortunately, it, it sometimes like I said, it all comes down to budget, and you know so. But yeah. I, 
Uh, Cyburn, you've been rather quiet. Do uh, you have any uh, comments or questions so far? Um, okay, we don't, I don't care. Know. Uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, con, the, the, the con landscape is very uh, new to me. I mean, I, I went to a 2010 BotCon for just a Saturday because I live in Orlando, so it was easy for me to get there. Uh, and then the only other convention I've ever been to is a local convention, uh, comic convention. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. The the con landscape is is new and foreign to me. I would I don't know anything. You know, I can't. So I, all I know is that when I the first con I went to, which was that bot con, um, the only things I could think of that really sort of irked me about my fellow fans is, um, well, in the panels, uh, I, I really didn't want to hear, you know, all the questions about, you know, will you have this character you voice and this character you voice have a conversation? It's stupid. Shut up. Um, <laughs> I wanted to hear him talk because that was, uh, that was what was really interesting. Um, talk about their career, and, and when they did do some of the lines, that was awesome. Uh, I, I think there are certain voice actors that you expect to do more actual voice acting, like, you know, your Scott McNeils, you sort of expect him to be yeah, he's character not. as soon as he gets up there, but... The character then, of the entire show. Yeah. When it, when it was like Peter Cullen, and, you know, someone was like, can you have Optimus Prime have a conversation with... Uh, Eeyore, I was like, what, what's the point in this? Let the man talk about something more entertaining. It's, it's interesting with, uh, with, with um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I pretty much deal, you know, we, it's just part of my, my job now is I, I dealing with the, the actors for both the Joe show, the G.I. Joe convention, which comes next week, by the way. Um, so if you're in the Springfield, Illinois area, make sure you pop out for that. You might have seen our little thing with the key to Cobra Commander. So, um, but yeah, it was that that worked out really well? That was kind of a that all came together. Incredible. That I, I would be lying if I said that I didn't have some inclination that it might take off. Because once the idea was there for for the key to be given to him, I thought that's something that's never been done before. So I was excited. So I was there. So I, you know, I went out, I went out there and did that, and then we also I went out there and shot the commercials with a, a team there. So, I, I was hoping either that the Joe Con, and I'll, I'll be off of this for like in 30 seconds, kind of people are like, uh, Joe, whatever, stop. Um, but I knew either the videos would, would take off, or I, I should say I had a good feeling either the videos would take off or that the, the photo thing would take off. Because I knew we had the support of the local um, convention bureau and it was going out to a lot of media. <laughs> I just thought it would actually take off from the AP media aspect and then go to the pop culture. I didn't realize it was going to hit the pop culture and then the media was going to pick up. But that, hey, whatever. You know, so we were, it, it was Comedy Central, MSNBC, we were on IO9, we we're just kind of everywhere. Anyways, though, um, so we've got Joe Con next week, but what I was talking about, I've totally forgotten. Um, what were we talking about? Bring me back. We were talking about the voice actors? Oh, uh, yeah, so... One thing I found, because um, I deal with the voice actors on the Joe side too, you know, whether I'm emailing them or talking to them, they're always there's a part of them that are all, that's always on. Um, I see it, like I said, I see it in the in the in the in the in the emails. I see it just talking to them. You know, some are off or not on that much. Like Dan Gilvezan, he's very kind of like. Like just a normal guy you'd be talking to on the street. There's not much you don't see a lot of the character come out when you're talking, but some people there's a part of their personality that's just always forming. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean it's actually a great thing, but it's just it's just kind of interesting to see that just some people are on all the time, some people are on um, um, part of the time, and then some people are just, you know, it's you don't you don't see much at all. But I'm my point is you'll see that more with with actors and voice actors, I think, than you, or especially with voice actors, I think, than with, uh, you know, your everyday person. Um, it's like a Robin Williams type who was just, like I said, anytime 
with the unfortunate situation with him, but any time that he was he had two or more people in the room, he was he was uh, he was on stage, and I think you see that sometimes with uh, I can definitely see that he likes God the ones so, and that's great. It's you know we, there's they make they they make for the absolute best guests too. Um, they all make for great guests actually. It's just I we we've had and I'll I'll talk about that for a quick second in the. 30 to 40, 50 guests that we've had over the last 10 years. Um, of course, I wouldn't name any if I even could think of any, but the, the numbers that uh, of people that have been a pleasure to deal with and have dead, given us no grief and no problem, I mean, it's not even, it's, the, the issues that we've had have been so minute compared to how pleasant and how easy it's been to work with just about every single person from, People, the regulars like David Kay and Peter Cullen, that even, you know, uh, the people that have only been to one show, like the Dobsons, I mean, they just, everybody have just been great, so. Now, That's um, yeah, I know we, we uh, spoke about the, the, the golden ticket and the VIP uh, before. Now, the VIP, is that more or less a, uh, give you a meet and greet type situation? Yeah, I wouldn't use me. That's that's you're gonna get to meet him and you'll get your autograph, but it's not like we're gonna be. There's gonna be five minutes of socializing. It's not gonna because sometimes they like to go up and people like to talk for three or four minutes, and there's not gonna be that much time. We've got to. There's gonna be so many people interested in this. You've got two hour autograph session. You, we're gonna sell. We're gonna make sure we can get as many people through each time. So it's gonna be very. Again, it's be very structured. Everyone will have very clear instructions from from the people, the staff, from from Frank understanding what we've got to do, from me understanding what I've got to do, and me communicating that to everybody else that's in line of, of okay, this is how we need to do this so everybody gets that fair amount of time to, to say, hi, how are you, thank you, I enjoyed your work. And it's a brief interaction. It's got to be because that's the only way we can get everybody through. So if we could do a thing where we had 10 hours and could give everybody 10 minutes, that'd be great, but we don't. Um, well, the, the reason the reason I was asking, and, and, and I understand with Frank Welker because the man is, is extremely busy and his time is extremely valuable. Well, it's, and, not, even, it's not even the, how much time. It's not whether or not his time, because we have him for the weekend. What I'm saying is we he only – can do so much in that weekend. Yeah, so we have to make sure we can get everybody through. Well, uh, I mean, but I was what I was getting at though is that is there a possibility in the future, um, considering you know, because uh, uh, you know, uh, in the pre-show we were talking about Slagacon, and uh, you know, it was a very small convention and everything, and 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 you know, it it, it a lot of people didn't give it a chance really. Uh, and the people that did got something really special, and and it's something that a small con tends to deliver more so than a, and a, than a large con like BotCon, SDCC, what have you. But I do know larger cons offer uh, certain things like a meet and greet situ uh, situation for a premium price uh, uh, for a very limited amount of people. Let's say you have ten people well, that are willing. We do all that. We do that for the yeah. golden ticket. Just Frank's just not available for that. So yeah. we'll have well, that too and, and other ones, but he's just it's it's that's not an option for, for what we got lined up for him. But that's yeah. what we try to offer with the golden ticket. You pay that you got the hundred people and you can come socialize with you know, like last year we had um um of like we had like a Jack Angel and uh um um Samantha Newark and uh, Michael McConaughey and Susan Blue and I mean, there were seven or eight guests in there um, that you can spend an hour and a half with talking. You know, yeah. that's that's exactly that's exactly what I was getting at because you know at the, at the second SlaggerCon, I believe it was uh, uh, Jim. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was uh, that's the one that Gary Chalk was at? That was Gary Chalk uh, and Hartman's. Yeah, um, Gary Chalk. Uh, I myself and Saint Galvatron and. Uh, Brian Slaughter and a couple, uh, one or two other people. We stood in, in a little circle in the middle of the dealer room, and mm -hmm. and Gary Chalk was there with us, and we literally shot the breeze for an hour and a half with Gary Chalk. Yeah, you know, just about everything. But that happens at all the time, though. Yeah, and that happens. I, mean, 
I've seen K sit down with people. I've seen um, back in the day, be, you know, why, well, I was, uh, you can catch. Me. <laughs> well, I'm not going with that. But um, you, there's been there's been guests that you know you can always catch the guest if you kind of catch them at the right time. As long as you're not intruding on their Peter like, Cullen at the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, so I mean, there's there's been you know all those same things happen. Um, and, and sometimes they're structured like the golden ticket, and sometimes they're not. Um, I'm only talking about things that we've got actually as part of the plan with Frank um, of what he'd be doing, and, and that we just don't have any of those. We don't have actual meet and greet type things set up, but for the actual program, we do have a, a thing where people, I think, will get a, a, a full value out of what they will have to spend to um, to get that experience. So, Yeah, I mean, I... Uh, I, I had a really great experience. I believe it was the BotCon in Lexington. Um, and you can't plan those. You can't plan those experiences too. What you're talking about, like no. the, that's just mm-hmm. gonna happen. Well, I mean, you, uh, this this here was at the at the at the dinner that uh, I believe it preceded the the casino night. And uh, the table that I I, uh, I was sitting there, and uh, there was like one other fan that was sitting here, and it was an empty table. You know, there was no assigned seating or anything. It was great. Uh, was sitting there, we had just got our food, and we were sitting there uh, talking. And who should come uh, sit down at the table with us was Blue Man Kuma, Pauline uh, uh, Newsom, uh, I believe, uh, is Air Razor. Yeah. Uh, 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 is Blue Man Kuma her? And Simon Furman mm-hmm. sat down at our table, and we just sat there and dined with those three. Yeah, that, was, was, that was in 2006, wasn't it? I, I, forgot, that, about. That was, I forgot about. I, I, I kind of forgot. Yeah, that was. Uh, I remember. Yeah, I remember we wanted Pauline because she'd never been to a show, and she had a lot of trepidation about um, trepidation about doing the show. So uh, she was really sweet. She was a nice, nice lady. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she she, she was. Uh, I remember talking with her, and she was really overwhelmed uh, with how awesome it was. And she she knew that there were Transformer fans out there, but she didn't know how truly passionate and knowledgeable we were as it's a not, fandom. And some of the guests are more than aware of it at this point, and some that come out for the first time are are, are, are blown away. So hey, uh, hold on. I just heard something. I gotta go check. Out, so I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, like a door open or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I know you guys. If you, if you uh, like like Cyburn, if you get a chance to go this year, I mean, it's 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 true. What? Hey, it, it's, it's Brett. Brett. Wow. Are what, what are you doing there? What am I doing? I'm high. He didn't go. He, There's more to uh, Pete than meets the eye. All right, hey, Megan was here in the uh, inner sanctum, and man, there's just. There's good stuff everywhere. I mean, I'm looking. G2 Starscream. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice sale. <laughs> what else we got here? What else we got? Got this guy here. What's that? Oh, that. that. Yeah. That. I saw this one before. The motorcycle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he is. That's, <laughs> oh, that's Pack Rat. Pack Rat everyone keeps talking about, right? Pack Rat. That looks pretty cool. Bye. Yeah. Hey, uh, if, if, if that, it begs the question, if uh, Packrat's there, what else is there? Yeah. I don't know. He's he's the thief, right? Yeah. Maybe I should take some of these. Things. See if you can find something else laying around there. I'm looking. I'm looking. There's he's got stuff all over the place. Oh my! That's that's Croc. Yeah. The Croc. Ooh. There we go. He's got like two of these. Oh. Guys. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Nova Prime. There we go. Two of them. And Lyle Convoy. <laughs> Very nice. Nice. This is nice. I'm trying to put everything back so he doesn't even know what's here. <laughs> well, you just been uh, been coaching him in the background or something? Who are you talking about? How does he know not know you're there? <laughs> what's this? What's what, that? What is that? What is that? What is that? What? What is? Hold Whoa. that back up. See, everyone knows I'm a big Beast Wars fan. I know right away who that is. Does anyone else know who that is? That's the Ramjet mold. Or uh, Thrust, 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 Th
It's uh, Rant. Wa- Waspinator from the th- uh, from the what is it? The Armada Thrust Mold. No, no, no. No, that's the uh, uh, the Shield. Reve- Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah. Uh, Dirge. Dirge. Yeah. As Waspinator. It looks like oh. it. Oh, guess what? Look what I found. I found these eggs. Oh. oh. <laughs> Those look familiar from a certain video. Here's another egg. Ooh. Yeah, I saw these on the thing. They said, uh, Dude, crack about... one open before he comes back. Journey! <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Can't leave your doors open anymore around this part of town. Wow. <laughs> I swear he he didn't he didn't show us anything. <laughs> I know. Well, the bad news is this is a uh, this is just a painted um, mock up. This isn't anything we're actually doing. This was a crap. Ah! Uh, <laughs> this was a custom. Uh, someone that uh, Jesse, who does a lot of work for us, uh, did up, and uh, we we actually talked about it, but we only talked about it briefly just because there was. Uh, we had already done the thrustinator, and it just. Uh, with a uh, well, you didn't talk long enough. So, <laughs> but I tell you, but you know, since since Brett I'll did find you. my surprise eggs, what what if what if I opened one right now? That would be yes. awesome. Yes, well, a, a TFLP exclusive yeah, reveal. Let's one. let's do the big one because that looks sexy. Like, and I like yellow since I'm partial to yellow. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll let Brett choose. I like blue. I was going to take the blue. Oh, blue one. Oh. Well, blue like, blue. blue's an awesome color, too, because okay. yellow and blue go together like weird wolf. What? What's... What? Oh, he picked the wrong one. This one's... The yellow one's got a toy from the set in it. Oh. The blue one has... But you are going to get a reveal, but it's not really anything to... Well, it's maybe something to write home about. Just a real brief letter. Um... This will come with one of the uh, the uh, the figures that you get at the show. So you will uh, get the shop shop repaint, repaint the shop shop. Looks like twin twist or top spin, maybe. Now don't try to speculate because you can sit here and say, "Oh, that means they're doing the um, uh, whatever uh, Le- Legends toy you came with." No, we actually just needed him for um, one of the figures in the convention only. Um, uh, offerings. Here, I will even transform them for you. Okay, there you go. That's him in vehicle mode. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> He's the. Uh, it's like scissors, but um, but yeah, that's uh, he'll be there. So you'll get him, but you won't get his legends buddy. He's packaged with someone else for a reason. So awesome. Now, now, what character is he supposed to be? I'm not gonna tell you that. Well, it looks like top spin. I mean, it's oh, blue God. and silver. And... No, no, it's it's... top spin because spin plus sucks. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember. That. Oh my God, that's an old one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's it. But um, I probably will be revealing this one on Tuesday. So Tuesday. All right. So we got a little sneak peek there, and that that that, uh, that waspinator, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and push for it. That needs to happen. That'll so you got you got to get so we know we got Susan Blue coming. You got Susan Blue coming. You got a blue shop shop coming. Um, you got your blue pack rat. So it is so a uh, blue tends to be a theme here, and, and there was autism, and it came out of a blue egg. Well, an autism awareness. Day was yesterday, so it just kind of worked out well that uh, we, uh, we we covered all the blue. So that was totally not intentional, but um, yeah, by down. So there you go. So. And, and see, Massey's even getting in on the attention here. Hey, what is it? <laughs> Our official mascot, Massey, the attack cat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Massey randomly attacks me from time to time, Pete, on camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Brett, Brett, wanted, uh, Brett, Brett wanted to know if Brett. Well, why don't you come into the screen, Brett? Because I'm hiding. You're not hiding. <laughs> the joke's over, man. Oh, that was too funny. Um, no, I thought that was a neat mold too, and I just was wondering if, uh, if enough people wrote in on it, would they make it? 
we get that survey. They always want to know about the survey, what's going on. <laughs> survey time here. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. Read the survey. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you how many of those things I have filled out. <laughs> and nothing has ever All been... I've got to say is there's not enough Tanakin to go around. And there's certain people out there, certain listeners, that will know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> because don't spray your crotch with Tanactin. Oh, at, at, at a botcon. Yes. So, <laughs> that being said. I was really like to start grabbing I, the stuff over here. Yeah. I just went to grab this one. Yeah, you, you notice this time I've got the stuff out of frame. So. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. You know what? I can see it plain as day. I mean, he's enjoying that. Um, but uh, but no, do you guys got any questions for me? So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to dip off here. I think. But well, actually, uh, I believe unless uh, unless the other guys have uh, some questions, I think we'll we'll wrap it up here. Uh, yeah. But um, I'll give them an opportunity to ask any questions if uh, if they have any. I'm I'm just gonna say, Pete, thanks for all the years of great fun. Uh, I've enjoyed, you know, ever since ever since '94, I've enjoyed uh, all the bot cons, and uh, just thank you for all the hard work and all the effort. I know y'all were constrained by what molds are available and what you can work with from having going to car with names and everything. So I just appreciate the hard work y'all do every year. So thank you much. Thank you. Coming to every bot con, but ninety-seven. Everyone, well, I, I, I was, slacker. I was, I was unemployed that year, so I really couldn't make oh, it. I'm sorry. Yeah, so but John, John, John Carl sent me a set anyway, so I was lucky to get the pack, the pack rat and the fractal, which I love. There's only seven of us left that have been to every one, so. I know. Last year, when John was doing the the celebration. Oh. It's like, has anyone been there for 19 years? I had to sit down. Like, wow. okay. so that was yeah, that was Carl's idea to do that. So there's only, yeah, it's uh, it's me, him, Preto, um, Chris, Chris, and uh, Harold. Yeah, yeah. It's Fumihiko for a long time. If you if you know Fumihiko, but he yep. stopped coming yep. about. Uh, sp speaking of uh, Tony Preto uh, and uh, tempting toys. The if you want to see a nice little gem from his personal collection, go to the uh, Indiana uh, Children or Indianapolis Children's Museum. Uh, there just happens to be a uh, Lucky Draw Energon Prime yep. uh, on display there, and it's from uh, Tony, uh, Tony Preto. Is uh, well, speaking of uh, what did uh, what did you and and Botcon, um Offer up to that that exhibit. We checked it out as a group last yeah, week. Yeah, Carl Carl called me up like last fall and was like, or texted me whatever, and was like, "Hey, I got this really cool thing we can do. I want you to help me." I'm like, "All right, what? You know, it's a big opportunity." I'm like, "Okay, what?" And he told me about it, and I was like, "That sounds like a lot of work, man." <laughs> he was like, "Because I guess they they reached out to Hasbro. Hasbro reached out to Brian, and then Brian." called Carl, and I was like, well, why didn't you call me? Carl sold all his toys. He doesn't have anything left. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, all right. So Carl's like, yeah, we, you know, I really want to help because, you know, he's from Indiana. He really wanted to do this, but he didn't have access to all the stuff from 84 through 2002. And I was like, all right. So he talked me into it. I mean, I, I'm very, in hindsight, I'm very, you know, I'm very glad I helped. But at the time, I was like, man, that's like a, a big, because, you know, they had the giant list. They wanted to have conference calls. And I got a little boy, work, everything went on. So I was like, all right, so let's let's talk about it. So they sent us a list, and I gathered up about 110 toys out of my collection. Carl pulled about 30 to 40 from what he had um, still, because they still have some stuff from 2002 and on. So he took care of all this stuff from the from that stuff. Um, and then, and then I talked to Preto because he needed, uh, they needed a centerpiece. They wanted a gold. They like asked me, they, they put on their suggesting of a gold prime. I'm like, well, I don't have a gold prime here. I set up, so I said, I said, well, I've got a star saber. That's kind of cool. G1, we'll send that out. I'm like, well, we've already got this case built for a gold prime. I'm like, well, you didn't tell me that. I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> so I, I called up to him. I said, I figured if anybody had a gold prime, it'd be him. So I said, you've got, you know, any gold primes? He's, yeah, I've got the Energon one. I was like, and he had the animated one too, but I was like, well, they 
were looking at getting the animated one, but Energon one seemed a lot more um, visually appealing, so I asked him to, to send that out for him, so he did me a personal favor on that. So, I will uh, have to. I will have to say that Beast Wars exhibit uh, yeah. with the diorama. Uh, I, I think Cyburn too here. I think I think he would crawl up on top of that exhibit and, and hug it and just drool all over it because it is it is all kinds of love. I was I was ridiculously impressed. I went out there for the Friday before the exhibit opened, or the Friday the first day the first the, the preview the they had the Friday preview and then the Saturday media day. So I went out there Friday because that was you know. A, Work day for me. It's easy because I, you know, I, I work full time. This is my full time job, so I, um, it's easier for me to go out there while I'm working. So um, uh, I, I covered that and wrote up some stuff for the magazine, and it was um, I was blown away. It was yeah, uh, that that display, that particular display, was like the highlight of that of that had, entire exhibit. I had seen their blueprints and I, you know, like their 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 planogram. So I kind of knew what they were planning, but to actually see it executed and they had that big, huge banner with the comics and all that stuff, I was, uh, uh, that's that's they did a great job. Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely it was definitely an altar for uh, for the Beast Wars gods. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it uh, Beast Wars was well represented in that display. Yeah. Yeah, um, they- I gave him a couple edits. I don't know if they have to check to see if they have a couple things that needed to be kind of tweaked as far as the, uh, just I think like a couple name things and stuff like well, that. The, they had some hilariously mistransformed items there. Uh, well, yeah. You know, the know. funny thing is, I sent them. They did buy some of the toys themselves. Um, I sent everything out there, transformed the way it should be. I was like, just this is how you need to put it. So hope most of that stuff I think got there, but some of the other stuff. They could probably use a, a helping hand, but you know, it's mm-hmm. I, I still I can't I can't say anything bad about them. I still some of the toys I'll I'll look at, I'll transform, and then someone will say, "You got that transformer wrong." I'm like, "Oh my god, really?" Like the newer ones. It's, well, it's I'm not cool. talking about just a panel that's not flipped or something. I'm like I'm like weapons put on backwards and arms. It's like like. You know, it's, it's like they pulled it out of the package, tried tried transforming it, said screw it, and then just put That's it into the uh, like. <laughs> Are you talking about specifically, like the? Um, well, there was a generations brainstorm that was uh, that was lacking the weapons, and it, and it was just sitting there, and its arms looked like they were half transformed. And they they just said screw it. Um, R- R.I.D. Uh, landfill. Yeah, R.I.D. That, landfill. His head was like five miles in front of the rest of his body. You know. <laughs> I sometimes will open them up and they'll end up that way too, and I'll just say screw it. <laughs> it's too, it's but, it's not. You know, I I always remind people. And the funny thing is, is I always I I remind people that I like all of you or most of you are. I grew up with the the ones we grew up with weren't were so much. And people like to try to knock the three step ones. I'm like, man, we grew up with three step ones, and those were like the best ones because. Right. You could transform them from robot to whatever you're doing with it quick. Yeah, that's the way it's good to be. Like the the, the headmasters, man. I I, I love like Hardhead. I remember getting him, and those are my favorite ones because they didn't require you know eighteen or or, or, or jump starters. You know, I mean, I, I'm sure yeah. I'm sure you can go to Mega Toy Fan and get plenty of jump starters. <laughs> 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 You definitely maximize the action. I, I, I didn't have to work at all at that point. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. I love the action master stuff. But, all uh, right, well, guys, I'm gonna go. so guys, uh, want to uh, want to thanks uh, thank everybody for uh, joining us. Uh, Pete, thank you for coming on, and Brett, thank you for surprising us. <laughs> um, that, was, think, that was not planned or staged in any way, shape, or form. That was no, at least no. <laughs> and, and pro wrestling is 100% real. Uh, <laughs> but but um, I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in this week. Uh, check us out on Twitter, at TFYLP. Check us out at TFTalk.net. And also on Facebook, uh, we have a page and a Facebook group that is uh, pretty active on there, and we're always sharing news and uh, interesting things on there. Uh, for Headmaster Don, Jim Black, Michael Swift, and that little short guy there named Megamus, uh, <laughs> I want to thank uh, everybody and thank you, Pete, for joining us this week. We will see you next time on Transformers for your listening pleasure.
Take care, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.